my first reaction, if I may be quite honest, is that it is not a matter of thinking. Uh, of course, we should think, uh, we should not think wrong, uh, screw up stuff and so on. And we should not let uh, uh, thinking go to the machines. But I think that it is, um, uh, if we talk about creativity, it is very much a matter of on creating the right conditions for creative, for creativity or identifying them and then trying to produce them so that people in those conditions uh, will be stimulated to bring out their best creativity, uh, the best of themselves. And of course, this is hard to, uh, to specify, but we have examples of uh, such conditions. And um, uh, because I'm not a philosopher and I don't go around brooding about various ways of thinking, uh, although I am fascinated by the idea that we can transcend our present limitations and get to some higher level of thinking through evolution or through something, uh, that is really interesting on the horizon. But that's not where I am at all. I am actually, uh, uh, I am actually uh, uh, both a researcher and uh, a teacher. Uh, and um, the more I teach, the more kind of insights I get I guess, into something, which is uh, uh, what students are about. Of course, I am in America, I'm in Chicago, I'm teaching international students, so it is not a necessarily very typical case either. Uh, I'm not out there in a small school, in a village, for instance, that would be very interesting. Um, but um, so I am reflecting generally on creativity. I'm going to address this issue totally in my own way. Okay, so. Uh, so I think it has to do with establishing the right conditions. And I think this is something that teachers, educators do intuitively. Uh, there is a kind of feeling about under what conditions students actually would do their best. Uh, well, uh, during a, a long career of, of, of experimenting or, or like perceiving things, uh, I think it very much has to do with uh, them feeling that they can cont contribute something that their opinion is asked for. Uh, uh, they have to get engaged and their emotions uh, uh, kind of stimulated. And uh, if they are engaged, they actually will learn. Uh, everybody knows, and as you have so eloquently described in your papers, everybody knows that the, the time is over when we are supposed to sit and soak up stuff. But I think that the idea of uh, I think the idea of this universal education that you just uh, tap uh, from the internet and then kind of soak up is not, not a very realistic one because there has, it is not necessarily so that students are motivated to learn by, uh, by, by listening. Even if it is very student centered and they can do it on their own time, I find that they don't read what I assign uh, uh, in that way. So it's not a necessarily a, a, a there has to be a physical expectation somewhere that they are doing their thing and there has to be a relationship involved. And that is why we have to have this uh, mixed uh, uh, project uh, of uh, learning, which so many of you have also suggested. Okay, so I think, what, why do I say uh, that uh, uh, there are conditions? Because I have been studying scientists. I have written a biography actually uh, uh, of a, very eminent scientist who has described his own process of thinking very often and his creative process. And I have then, in addition, analyzed his life based on more information. And, uh, uh, and I think he, ha he has indirectly uh, mentioned both the conditions for why he is so creative. Of course, he had also a very big head, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It may be a particular case, but uh, uh, if I look at this, this case and also other cases of uh, supposed uh, uh, great creativity of scientists, it has to do with having a concrete problem situation, which is extremely hard. It is so hard that they are frustrated to death and they don't want to see it any longer. So after working on it for a very long time and with their best capability and they are all intelligent people, they get very angry and they go out for a walk or something like that or go to the beach and just sit there and, you know, 
soak up the sun. And then suddenly, as Sidney Brenner did, uh, who was a discovery of the uh, RNA uh, situation after the, uh, after the DNA synthesis, he jumped up from the beach and said, it's the magnesium, stupid. Okay, <laughs> they had put too little magnesium and therefore they didn't see the effects that they expected because they were sure that their experiment, their experimental model was right, but there was something wrong. And even if it showed negative results for a very long time, they didn't give up, which is another marvelous uh, uh, feature in scientists. They just don't give up and that neither should we. Okay, so uh, the point is that the problem focuses somehow the mind and even if you don't know what's going on, the creativity happens there somewhere and bingo, you get it. This is of course a very stereotypical view, but I think that there is something to the expectations of others who know that you are working on the problem, maybe your support group and the, and, uh, 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 and the point that you have done your utmost best activated as much as you can of your brain. And then when it is at rest, something happens. And what is it that happens? It seems to be in creativity, one of the aspects is some kind of connection between different neural circuits. I mean, I'm speaking now in layman's terms, but something like this. And uh, as uh, Yanani explains in one of her papers, uh, uh, she talks about symbols and metaphors, exactly. There is uh, various ways in which totally unrelated networks can kind of connect because of some similarity of some kind that the brain perceives, or you may not even see it yourself, but sometimes you do. For instance, my, uh, uh, my um, uh, uh, the person I studied was actually describing that he got one of his best ideas for modeling uh, parasite prey, uh, uh, prey interaction. He was into this kind of various kinds of uh, biological modeling. He got one of his best ideas from a novel of, by, by Tolstoy where characters were kind of having seething disagreements, okay? So, you know, you take it from one part of the brain and it connects with the other part and so on. Therefore, what we should do and what we know we have to be doing anyway is to expose, try to uh, uh, interest, make students interested in expose students to all kinds of different uh, 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 realms of learning, art, uh, uh, engagement, emotional engagement, and so on at an early point, so that they get this kind of uh, tools sitting there that then can activate later. This is like that and it connects somewhere. I find it totally fascinating and I, I think uh, more of this, of course, will be, will be found out. How much do I have left? Two minutes? One minute. Okay. Um, mm. Okay, uh, so uh, another, another uh, uh, kind of simulation of this situation, which I think will stimulate creativity, is uh, of course project-based learning. Project is a kind of simulated real situation where you have a problem to solve. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, as Yanani was also saying in her paper, uh, uh, humankind has been in, in these situations to solve problems, of course, throughout our uh, existence. It has ne not ne always been as urgent as some of these scientific problems, but it has been something that had to be solved. And therefore all the capabilities and perceptions were kind of mobilized, maybe out without our knowledge in order to find out, for instance, agriculture had to be discovered because the wild animals could not be chased any longer and it you had you had to do you, you had to to become stationary so what do you do now so there is a kind of that has been a slower process but project-based learning is one simulation and also as uh, you have i think two different slightly competing models about what to do at this world level one is some kind of edu uh, basic edu uh, educational um, model which is of course very valuable uh, and uh, then there is, uh, but uh, it has to be complemented with others. And then you have another uh, suggestion, which is um, that um, uh, it's very important to involve children at an early stage in various kinds of activities, 
uh, which uh, provide some kind of entrepreneurship or some kind of internship or activities so that you get, get skills early on. And I think they also contribute to that, to those networks that uh, and help you uh, bro if further broaden your um, your uh, uh, so to say tool bag for creativity.